So the Vietnam Empowerment and Accountability Program, um, it has two components. And the component that we are going to talk to you about now is the Coalition Support Program. And the second uh, component is called PARAF, which is uh, Public Participation and Accountability Facilit Facilitation Fund. It's, a, it's separate. It's a basically an NGO challenge fund to facilitate NGOs to um, work with the National Assembly on laws. So it's, it's a separate one. So VIP is a big, bigger program. So um, basically the Coalition Support Program is a successor, a sister uh, project to SAVI and to Poipin. Um, and uh, it was contracted to Oxfam in 2012. And um, basically what uh, we did is that we did a country level uh, political economy analysis to identify the issues of public concern. And then from there, once we decided on the issues, we uh, did further sectoral uh, PA analysis to identify the uh, stakeholders, the processes, and the opportunities to identify coalitions. Yeah? And in the end, we, we, uh, we have uh, supported six coalitions. Um, in terms of result, uh, the, the log frame, the defeat log frame, there are three results that we, uh, we have been monitoring. First of all is the coalition strengths. Um, second is the policy effectiveness. And the third is basically the number of policy processes that the coalition have been working on uh, in a broad sense. Um, so the emphasis of the program is on the demand side, so media, uh, communication, in advocacy, and also on the learning side, using uh, the qualitative um, uh, assessment survey. And um, basically, DFIT is closing its office at the end of this year, early next year, and basically, uh, coalition support program phase one is coming to an end, but we are on the preparing the second phase. So when Oxfam started to implement, uh, there was already a uh, general program design, terms of reference, from DFID. And we then designed in a more detailed fashion how it would work and what we would do. And we tried to fit that design to the specific context of Vietnam, uh, which is a different place to do advocacy and coalition building than, than some others. Uh, so it's a single party regime with a lot of decentralization and fragmentation among different parts of the state. Uh, that meant that we could identify allies in uh, particular state agencies um, and also spaces between state and society such as research institutes or retired officials uh, that were good allies uh, for the program. Uh, and this also aims to expand civil society participation in policy making by involving civil society in multi-stakeholder groups uh, and so that people can participate as active citizens. So there is space in Vietnam for th this kind of cooperative uh, evidence-based advocacy on particular issues and we tried to identify where that's possible and also for media engagement. Uh, both through the uh, traditional media, which is uh, state controlled, and increasingly through uh, internet blogs and social media. Uh, as Hung said, we, uh, we started out with a political economy process, first at the country level, and then we selected coalitions in six areas, six issue based coalitions. That's what it looks like. They are mining, clean water forestry, land policy, agriculture, and health. Um, of course, within those, uh, there are specific areas that the coalitions worked on. For instance, agriculture has focused on the market mechanisms in rice and livestock feed and in uh, farmer organizations. Health has looked at uh, health insurance, um, early childhood, uh, maternal ch child health, and so on. Uh, and we chose these six areas based on assessed level of public concern about the issue, the potential for policy reform, and the commitment there is among existing stakeholders when we started. Uh, 
So a couple of examples of results. Uh, one is uh, working on land policy around uh, revision of the land law in 2013. Uh, and uh, we used a model of public consultation, which was a new thing in Vietnam and we think can become a model for future laws. Uh, and of the recommendations that came out from this, some were accepted into the law and some were not, but among the achievements were some limitations on compulsory land acquisition by the state, so that now it can only be used for public projects, according to the law, and not for private economic development projects as before. And there is also language in the law about citizens having the right to monitor implementation and land use planning. So now after the law has been passed, the coalition is continuing to, uh, to focus on those aspects. Uh, in forestry, we've successfully advocated for reallocation of about 2,500 hectares of state forest enterprise land to communities, which are mostly ethnic minority communities. Uh, on mining, uh, we are working to have a government commitment to join the EITI, the Extractive Industries Transparency Initiative, and that's still in process. So our desired impacts, each coalition has specific objectives. They have a strategy which is uh, uh, medium term, at least, multiple years, and then annual work plans, which are flexible during the year as new opportunities come up. Uh, so we hope to achieve transformational change in each of these sector areas. We also have a cross-learning component uh, where coalitions share with each other and can work on some cross-cutting issues. So for instance, now uh, a law on lawmaking procedures, uh, a draft law on associations, some issues that face all of the coalitions. So through this, we hope to uh, support and facilitate increased space for cross-sectoral governance and civil society participation. We also hope that there will be more donor interest uh, in these kinds of programs and that the coalition approach can spread to other areas in Vietnam. Okay, so uh, what are the DDD principles that we, uh, that, that make um, coalition support program different? So first of all, there's no single government counterpart. So there's no government home. And that creates a lot of flexibility. So you don't need a uh, whole package approval or for anything for, for the whole program. Yeah. Um, secondly, uh, the program is partner-led. So basically, the coalition de develop a long-term strategies and then develop annual work plan to get there, following, I mean, persisting, I mean, this objective. Uh, and basically it's, I mean, for phase one, it's a three year, it's a three year support uh, for the strategies. Um, the issue-based advocacy initiative involves multiple coalition members. Um, and then fourthly, the use of the qualitative uh, assessment scorecard at the coalition and program level. Um, and then there's a detailed risk uh, matrix assessment that is reviewed every three months. Um, also, the defeat log frame has been adapted to the to this quas uh, tool. The um, coalition membership it's a multi stakeholder model. So basically, it's 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 uh, NGOs, research institute, academics, um, media. And uh, a lot of the coalition also involve the uh, champion in the government from the government counterpart. And also some involve private sector. And, um, but usually uh, the coordinating organiza organization is an uh, NGO. And I think out of six, uh, there's only one that is uh, being coordinated by a uh, research in institute. Uh, and, and there, it's, it's just not by choice, but by, um, by decision, because basically uh, the NGO that was leading before, it was too busy to, to lead, so it was like passed to this uh, research institute. 
Um, some stakeholders are not formal members, but uh, contribute as coalition allies and participants. And since the start of the program, we drop one coalition, one coalition on urban planning, and uh, added two on health and on agriculture. So now, on what are the challenging, uh, what are the challenges of this program, and 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 some of the solutions that we have been uh, uh, try to to address the challenges. I think there's some. Uh I need to talk into that. There are some challenges that are specific to our context and our program, and some that are perhaps more general to all, all programs of this type. So we divided it that way. Yeah. So I'll talk about the Vietnam specific, and then Andrew will talk about the general one. So first of all, it's the um, requirement for government project approval at the coalition level, because basically, uh, the uh, coalitions are usually the NGOs who receive money from Oxfam as an implementing uh, partner. They, they have all followed this Decree 93. The, co the coordinators have to follow that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So um, basically it's a constraint but it's also a good thing uh, because then like each different NGOs will apply for different um, permits and that's spreading the risk in a way. Um, a related uh, challenge is a restriction on legal status of NGO, so we have to, we have to diversify the coalition member. As I said, for example, this uh, research institute, for example, would uh, I mean replace an NGO where this attention yeah, from, for government approval. As you can guess, in a one-party single system, there's the nervousness of the government uh, and also especially the public security in a context like Vietnam where basically they are so worried or so nervous about any possible social movement or... Um, so basically what we have to do is that me as DFIT and Oxfam, we have to have regular meeting with the public security and also the um, Oxfam, they have to meet with the governing body, PACOM, pretty regularly to explain uh, what is going on. Um, another challenge is that um, social movement, very important on demand side, but so far the program is not able to support them because of the context. Um, so basically, we have to support activities that are possible in the short term and may have a long-term impact on citizen participation, such as the local people consultation, for example, on the land law, or on the forest development law, for example. Just to add a few general things, uh, we found that uh, there's turnover over time among coalition members and especially key people in the coalitions. So we need to keep on training and building capacity. It's not just right at the beginning, it's over time. Uh, there is a risk of uh, knowing when we should intervene and when we shouldn't because we want the coalitions to take leadership. Uh, we can't create or establish them, but we need to support them to achieve their goals. So it's a question of, somebody asked this morning, how long is an arm's length, yeah? Uh, and then we also need to balance between donor requirements and flexibility. Uh, we're all used to project mechanisms, but we want to find ways to move beyond that. Okay, so finally, our advice for people to uh, work in this way. Um, first of all, we thought that uh, the political economy analysis at general level and then at the sectoral level are essential, basically, for strategizing. So basically focusing on stakeholders and institutions and processes. We don't do it as often as Jaime. I remember you say you do it like every day. <laughs> but um, it's very important. Secondly, the uh, qualitative assessment uh, survey is very useful tool for reflection and planning. Uh, so basically, we do it every six months, the coalitions, uh, for reflection and for re-strategizing for the next six months. Um, thirdly, the role of the coordinating organization 
or the coalition leader is vital. We cannot undermine that. Um, and lastly, um, it has to be a right managing institution, uh, organization, and the right people in the organization. I mean, we are very happy with Oxfam as an implementing partner. I don't know what would have happened if we would have picked a consultancy company. Probably we wouldn't have gone so far. Uh, so basically, the, the, the issue about having a like-minded uh, implementer is very, very important.